Hello, my name is Juan Hernandez, and we'll be talking about the conic sections. And uh, uh, background information about it is that in the 350 BC, while trying to solve a problem of duplicating the cube, my enactments observed that slicing a cone with a plane not parallel to its base would create certain curves depending upon the angle at which the plane passed through the cone. However, it was not until Apollonius between 262 BC and 190 BC that he gave the conics their modern names, circle, ellipse, parabola, and hyperbola. There are three types of conic uh, sections, which are the hyperbola, the parabola, and the ellipse. Uh, the circle is actually a special case of the ellipse and is sometimes called a fourth type of conic section. Uh, a circle, well, the, a circle is a set of all points in a plane equidistant from a fixed point called the center. So a, a circle is, uh, is a figure that can be formed by slicing a three-dimensional cone with a plane. There are three different ways to do this, and each way yields a different figure. So here we have the cones, and if we cut them in order for it to be a circle, uh, for it to be a circle, the set of, of, uh, of all points have to be equally distanced from the center. So we have uh, two, we have the formulas, which is, the general form is uh, x squared plus y squared, which equals to r squared. And the standard form formula is x minus h squared plus y plus k squared equals r squared. Now, how do we draw a circle? Well, if we use our standard form formula and let h equals 3 and k equals 2, well, we switch the signs of h and k. So here we have a negative 3, which goes to positive 3. And here we have a 2, we go, which goes to negative 2. So the center will be 3, negative 2. So we set the radius r squared equals to 16. We square root both sides, which will give us to r, the radius equals to 4. So then you should have the point 7, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 3, 2, and 3, and negative 6. Now, by plugging in this point, we can get our circle. <coughs> so our center is 3, negative 2, which will be right here. Uh, now we have the point 7, negative 2, which will be right here. We have negative 1, negative 2, which will be right here. We have 3, 2, which will be right here. And we have 3, negative 6, which will be over here. So then we create the circle. And this right here is our center, which is, well, remember it's 3, negative 2. And then our radius is this, which equals to r equals 4. That's how a circle looks like. Now, an interesting fact about this is that a circle has infinite amount of lines of symmetry. I'm Mr. Salazar and I will be teaching conic section ellipse. A history background on ellipse is a person named Kepler in 1602 said he believed that the orbit of Mars was oval. Then he later discovered that it was an ellipse with the sun at one focus. In fact, Kepler introduced the word focus and published his discovery in 1609. So what is an ellipse? Well. It, it's the set of points x, y in a plane and the sum of whose distance from two di distinct fixed points foci is always constant. How do you draw an ellipse? Well, like a circle, you have a center and you have a radius and you go around. In the ellipse, you have two focus points and you go up and you draw around to make the ellipse. Now, to put it into a graph, we would have a major axis and a minor axis. We will also have two foci points. How do you know which is the major axis? Well, the major axis will always be the, the longest length and the minor axis will be the, the lesser of the length. So this will be in horizontal major axis. This one would be a vertical major axis with two foci points. And this one will not be the center is not at the origin. Now, the formulas for 
an ellipse are x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. And the foci formula is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Now, how, how could you graph this? Well, we have an example over here. We have x squared over 100 plus y squared over 64. Here, if when it's a squared here, you, you move to the left and the right. And y squared, you move up and down. So here we have a squared equals 100. To find 100, we square root a, and we will get a major axis of plus 10 and negative 10. Here we would have b squared equals 64, b will equal plus and minus 8 in the minor axis. And to find the foci formula, we would, we would substitute 100 here and 64 here, and we would get 36. So thir c squared equals 36 would be c equals plus and minus 6. Now, to graph it, we would put in the points, which would be plus 10, negative 10, and we would have plus 8, negative 8. And for the foci points, we would have negative 6 and positive 6. So now we draw the ellipse, and that's how you draw an ellipse. My name is Christopher De Leon and I'll be presenting hyperbola in the conics section. Uh, hyperbola was first studied by Mechanicus and he was studying a special case of the hyperbola. This special case was xy is equal to ab where the asymptotes are at right angles and this particular form of hyperbola is called the rectangle hyperbola. Uh, Equiwood and Arceus wrote about the general hyperbola but only studied one branch of it while uh, Polyanus was the first to study the two branches of hyperbola gave, that gave the hyperbola. The focus and diatrix of a hyperbola were considered by Pappus and a hyperbola describes a family of curves together with ellipses and parabola. They make up the iconic they make up the conic sections. Hyperbola is two branches open curve produced by the intersections of a circular cone and a plane that cuts both napes of a cone. So the definition of a hyperbola is a focus of points, uh, p, x, y, such that the difference of the distance from p to the two fixed points of f1 and f2, that is called the foci, are constant. And a simpler term for the definition is as the path of points moving so that the ratio of distance from a fixed point f to the distance from a fixed point vertical line is a constant greater than one. So uh, here are the two napes. Uh, the plane is cutting this in half, and you have the two hyperbolas, and the both of them are equal distance, or not necessarily equal distance, but both of them are equal. So this is the same as this. Now, a simple form of this would be the two examples I have here. Hyperbola can come in two forms, of both being horizontal and vertical. See right here that we have the center, we have the transient vertex, the conjugate axis, we have the two focal points uh, from both sides, and that you can see that both of them are supposed to be equal to each other. Because all a, focal, all a hyperbola is, is technically either two ellipses or two parabolas put together, separated by your asymptotes. So uh, a simple formula for the hyperbola is x squared divided by a squared minus y squared divided by b squared is equal to 1. Uh, if we want to get more in depth into it, we have two versions, the horizontal equation and the vertical equation. We have an equation for each. In the horizontal equation, we have x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus v squared over b squared is equal to 1. And for the vertical equation, you have y minus, you basically switch to the y and the x and everything else stays in the same place. So for our horizontal equation, it's represented by graph B down here, and our vertical is represented by graph A up here. So in order to graph this, we can look at this equation, x squared divided by 4 minus y squared divided by 1 is equal to 1. Here we're seeing an example of what I'm going to do as a horizontal equation. 
So what we do is we look at the four and we can get this to its basic square. So four is basically a two squared and one is basically one squared. So from the center, because that's gonna be our point of origin, we go from the center, we go over to the right two, and we go up one. And we do this for all sides. Then we're gonna connect our corners. And that's gonna give us our asymptotes. And because we said um, that this was gonna be a horizontal equation, our two parabolas are gonna be on the top and bottom with our vertices being at the edge of these two. And you're gonna call this the transcendental vertex and this is gonna be our conjugate vertex. And it's basically connected like this. And that's basically our hyperbola and how we do it. So my name is Aaron Moreno and I'll have a presentation on the connex section of the parabola. So starting off the definition of a parabola is a symmetrical open plane curve formed by the intersection of a cone with a plane parallel to its side. Over here uh, we can see the definition. So if we slice this cone with the plane parallel to the slant size, then inside we're going to get the parabola. And then definition number two would be a curve where any point is at an equal distance from the focus and the directrix. So I went ahead and underlined these two uh, words because in the problem that uh, we'll be working on, I'm gonna go ahead and go into detail about this. So then we can move on to the formulas. So the formulas uh, for the parabola, uh, we can have four types of parabolas. So uh, the parabola can open up, can open down, or can open uh, sideways either to the right or to the left. So for a parabola that will open up or down, we have this formula, which is x minus a constant h squared equals a 4p uh, times y minus a constant k. And here we can go ahead and underline p, where p is the distance from the focus to the vertex. Uh, then if we have a parabola that opens to the right or to the left, we have y minus k, a constant k squared equals 4p times x minus a constant h. So then uh, we can go ahead and work two problems. So then the first problem would be uh, y equals 1 half x squared. So then uh, what we can go ahead and do is put it in this format where the squared, um, the, the squared is on the left side. So then we can go ahead and move 1 half x squared equals y. Uh, and then we can go ahead and remove this 1 half by multiplying times 2 on both sides. So then if we multiply times 2 and times 2, so then we'll get x squared equals 2y. So then since we don't have any constants uh, subtracting from x or from y, then we automatically assume that it's x minus 0 squared equals 2y minus 0. So then uh, we can see here that our vertex, so then our vertex, is at zero comma zero. And then from here, since we have a two here, then uh, this, th this two becomes our four P. So then we can go ahead and write four P equals two. And to find P, then we just divide by four on both sides. So then P equals one half uh, so then 
over here we can go ahead and start graphing it so then our vertex which is this one it's at zero zero and um, our focus is gonna be one half so then we're gonna go one half to the top and then also over here we mentioned the directrix so then our vertex is going to be halfway between the focus and the directrix so then since we have our vertex here we have our focus here our directrix would be down here what one half as well and a directrix is actually a parallel line to our main axis in this case the x-axis so then from here we can just go ahead and graph our, our graph and the importance about these two points is uh, what we mentioned on definition number two a curve where any point is at an equal distance from the focus and the directrix so pretty much if we have a point here then the, the distance from this point to the focus will be the same distance from this point to the directrix. And that's all about parabolas.